Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher, and I was on my way to replace my spark plugs. I have NGK TR5s in my LS, and I was going to switch out to TR6s for whatever reason I thought switching out to a colder plug might be a better idea, but the more I thought about it, the less it made sense. So then I was going to go out and buy TR55s, which are larger gap versions of the TR5s, but I ended up just regapping my TR5s to 55 and now I'm solid. It runs excellent, it runs better than it did before and I'm super happy. When I pulled out all my plugs, they all look like they all look like this. I don't know if you can tell, but it's pretty well burnt. If anything, it's running a little lean, but for the most part, it's running pretty good. You can see a couple things up here. Uh, if the light kind of helps, uh, it does not. I'll just kind of go ahead and tell you. So you know, a couple things you can see on the spark plug. You can see that the heat range is pretty good because there's a distinct line from here to here, which tells me that the, the spark plug is not overheating. Um, it's black on the edges, but it's clean on the inside, which tells me that it's running pretty good. A little bit on the rich side, but not too much. The porcelain, supposedly it's supposed to be a bright white. I don't know after how many miles it starts to change brown, but these plugs have been in there for several thousand miles in pretty harsh conditions, so I have I don't blame them for being a little bit brown. I've also swapped out several carburetors, jetting, um, several tuning steps, and my spark plugs have all remained the same. This is the first time I actually pull them out and actually look at them since the motor's been back in my engine. So I, I got to thinking that this is probably one of the least important steps uh, nowadays when it comes to tuning your carburetor and it's all because we have something like this all right guys so this is what's called the wideband o2 gauge or an afr gauge i'm going to go ahead and start it up it's powered up by my ignition switch i just turn it on to the key on position and this thing lights up and then it has a preheat cycle and then it turns on as soon as I start the truck, it'll start giving me real-time readings of what's going on inside my engine. So as you can see right now, completely off, it's reading a 20, 21, and it's quickly getting more and more lean. What that says is that there is 21 parts of oxygen per one part uh, fuel exiting my exhaust. So normally on a running engine, this would be super bad, but because the engine's off, it's to be expected. If I turn the engine on, this is going to give me real-time readings. As you can see right now, it's already zeroed out. After it gets, I believe, to 22 or 23, it zeroes out completely, which means it, the engine's basically 100% off or it's running so lean, we've already passed beyond the measurable amount of my wideband O2 gauge. The wideband is one of the most, if not the most, important tools when tuning a carburetor because it gives you every single part of information and more that the old style of plug readings used to give you. Nowadays, plug readings are actually pretty worthless, if you ask me, and it only has a couple things that, that the wideband O2 sensor doesn't have, and I'm going to go ahead and explain those at the end of the video, but I'm going to quickly explain why you need uh, one of these and why you probably should stop reading your plugs because it's not going to really do you any good. I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys this ahead of time. Usually when your car is an all-out race car, you guys tend to want to run a fresh set of plugs right before you make your run. You make your test pass. You go ahead and you pull the plugs and then you decide to go jet up or jet down depending on how the track is, what the humidity is like, what elevation you're at. And uh, if you're actually building a car to be a daily driver, plug readings are actually pretty useless. When you think about the basic concept of a plug reading is you put a fresh set of plugs, you run your engine at a certain RPM or wherever you think you need to tune it, you drive it, your park, spark plug gets worn, you turn off your engine immediately, you pull over, you pull your one of the spark plugs, you check it out, you either say, oh, it's running rich or it's running lean, Put a fresh new spark plug in there, do your adjustment, go down the road again, try it again, then you go pull over again, take the spark plug out, check it again, oh, almost, I need to go a little bit leaner, then you go ahead and keep repeating the process over and over and over again. And for a race car driver that tends to want to go ahead and make the fastest pass possible, uh, you tend to go by your ETs, uh, 60 foot times, your quarter mile times. 
everything like that is what tends to make you want to uh, go by plug readings or just step up your jet sizes until you reach the maximum amount of speed. In a typical carburetor application, that's how you want to do it. But we're not actually talking about race cars here because if you guys are actually a professional race car driver and you just all you focus on is driving your race car at the track, then this, this video is probably not for you. This video is actually for the person who's daily driving their vehicle to and from work maybe, drive it out on the weekends, take it out for a cruise. They're more focused on getting that pristine low-end torque. They want to get that the highest MPG that they can. They don't want to be dumping in fuel unnecessarily. And it's for mainly people who want to keep their engines more or less running as clean as they can so that way they have the least amount of problems in the future in terms of like carbon deposits and things like that they want everything to be running pretty spick and span they don't really want to be driving around a smelly car if you take a car that has been properly tuned for the track and you try to drive around in the as a street car uh, without making any adjustments you're going to find that your street car is going to be running super rich and it's probably not going to be running as optimum as you would like it to wasting a lot of fuel and energy trying to drive around town when you can just have a carburetor for home and a carburetor for the track. So spark plug readings. Basically, what I'm trying to convey here is that the old school method of tuning your carburetors nowhere near compares to how we can go ahead and tune it in everyday life. Uh, carburetors are mainly reserved for racing applications and for people who want that nostalgic look like someone like me but the way we tune them are very different and a lot of the old practices that the old timers used to you know do and you know those old secrets and like you know indexing your spark plugs and things like that people don't really do that anymore it's not really popular in the sense that the gains from indexing your plugs and things like that don't uh, amount to anything. You need your wideband O2 sensor. You need to be reading uh, your idle, what your idle's at. You need to be reading your transition. You need to know your main jets. You need to know when your power valve's kicking in, how much your power valve's kicking in, what your secondaries are like, and if or if you don't need a secondary power valve when you're working on a Holly carburetor. If you're talking about Edelbrocks, I have no idea. Um, I'm not the guy to be asking about Edelbrock carburetors, but. For those of you who have not got a AFR gauge, I definitely recommend that you do. Um, it's going to save you so much time and headache uh, running your carburetor with an AFR gauge and the wheel reading thousands and hundreds and millions of spark plugs. Uh, nobody really has time for that anymore. A few final notes about spark plugs before we go ahead and close this up. They are probably your camera into your engine reading your spark plugs can tell you so much more than just how your engine is running in terms of your afr you should go ahead and leave that to your afr gauge but the most important things you can learn from pulling your spark plugs is if you are running too too lean that to the point that you're breaking up your your ceramic and maybe you need to switch over to a colder plug you're also going to know if you're pre-detonating because the metal strap, the ground strap, is going to be damaged. Your ceramic might be damaged as well. You're going to be able to tell if you're burning oil because you're going to get crust uh, all around the, the ground strap and the ceramic and everywhere. The more oil you burn, the more stuff you end up on this. Those are usually things reserved for when you're doing your oil changes or things like that. Maybe 20,000 miles, 10,000 miles, 50,000 miles. Whenever you change your spark plugs... Just when you pull them out and put it, put it in a fresh set, just glance them over real quick. Make sure they don't look abnormal. But leave your tuning to your AFR gauge because that is your go-to, uh, your first line of defense, your only line of defense between you and knowing exactly how your engine needs to perform so it performs in at its optimum settings all the time. So that's going to wrap it up here for uh, you guys. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.